Hello, everyone. Hello. Oh, and of course, I don't have my. One second, guys. I do not mean to be doing this again. There we go. Hello, everyone. A little bit faster this time, and I'm still struggling with getting this rolling on time. Hi, it's nice to see you all. I hope you are all well. Thank you for joining me. So today, we are talking about used cloth diapers. And let me know if you can hear me, if there's a problem with audio or anything like that. Um, if the music in the background is super annoying, let me know that too, and we'll fix that. Um, but yeah, we had this as a comment in, I think, the last YouTube version of the live. I'm doing lives on Facebook and YouTube alternate weeks. Um, so the last YouTube one, someone had comments said, can you please talk about used cloth diapers and sanitizing them and all that stuff? So I'm like, sure, let's do it. So that's what we're doing today. So if you have a topic that you want me to talk about, make sure to leave it in the comments and I will put it in the schedule for sure. Um, so rather than wait for people to show up, I'm just going to kind of get rolling because I know this lives on YouTube afterwards and people don't like to wait for the whole presentation. So let's get started with that. Let me share my screen with you. There we go. And I can pull this to the top so you can see it. So just like last time, I have a little, little something something here for you. Um, all about used cloth diaper. So we're gonna today we're gonna talk about you know how to find them, where to find them, what to look for when you do find them to make sure that they're worth the money because you are buying used stuff, right? So you want to take a bit closer look. Um, and then once you have them, how to prepare them for your baby. So, whoop, sorry. <laughs> so let's go. So used diapers. Are you kidding me? No, I am not kidding you. It is a thing. If you're thinking it's kind of gross right now, then probably this presentation isn't for you. But if you're someone who doesn't mind used items for your baby, and trust me, they're gonna there's gonna be a lot of items, and there's a lot of stuff that buying used is good for, including diapers, because yes, they can be cleaned and sanitized for your child. So why would you want used diapers? I mean, why? First of all, they're gonna save you more money. So <laughs> like that's kind of the main point, right? Um, so I have, I did kind of a video and some calculations on how much cloth I bring will save you over disposable diapers. Um, and I have a video on that. I'll put that video in the description after this. And I'll also try to put a card up here somewhere um, once this video is, is live and replaying. Um, but basically in that video, I kind of crunched the math in came up with the number of $1,575.50 for the first child is what cloth diapers are going to save you over disposable diapers on average. But that amount is using an average cloth diaper cost of about $18. For used diapers, for sure, for sure, you're going to spend much less than $18 for your cloth diapers, and that can even be premium brands. So just keep that in mind. You're going to save even more money. And then, of course, as you use them for additional babies, even more savings, right? Just like just like new diapers. Um, but another perk of buying used is you're helping create the market for used diapers so that when you're done with your diapers, you're like, that's enough babies, I'm, I'm good. Then you can take your diapers and resell them to others. So you're creating this whole cloth diaper market. And it's just great. It's you know, great for the environment, which is further down the list. Um, oh no, that's my next point. <laughs> so it's it's great for the environment that way because you know nobody's throwing out their good used diapers, and we're all saving money, saving the environment that way. Um, you can get limited editions and special prints. So I know a lot of you in the community are really into like the TV shows and all of that now. So 
if you can't find a good TV show diaper in a new print, then you can start looking in used and get all the, the prints you like. Limited editions, when I first started cloth diapering in 2015, limited editions were a huge thing, like huge. Like people were paying thousands, I'm not kidding, thousands of dollars for a diaper, a used diaper, because it was like some fancy limited edition print that they had to have. It was nuts, it was nuts. Thankfully that's over, Although, not thankfully, if people like that then fill your boots, but yeah, it was, <laughs> it's, it's died down now a lot. Um, another really big perk that a lot of people don't think about when they're buying used diapers, especially if you're buying them locally, but also if you're buying them through online communities, you're making a connection with another cloth diaper parent who has used your exact diapers. So you get that one-on-one -on -one experience, advice, all of that so that's that's huge I mean how many of us are cloth diapering without knowing anybody else in our lives that cloth diapers right so having that person there who's used diapers who's used your diapers as a resource is fantastic so another huge perk that people don't really think about um, and no prep needed so when you buy new diapers that are hemp especially but also I'm I'm seeing a lot of companies come out with cotton and and actual bamboo that do need a little bit of extra prepping but hold that thought right now hemp um you need to wash it several times and I talked about this in the last presentation about inserts you need to wash it several times in order to get that true absorbency and yeah you don't have to do that with these diapers because the person who used them before has washed them and prepped them all of those times so instant diapers you just have to sanitize them and get them ready and then they're ready to roll it's another perk and I'm seeing some people are here so does somebody want to give me like a thumbs up or like a, a comment or something just to let me know you can hear me and everything's good so I don't do the whole presentation and then find out no one's hearing me thank you um okay moving on so are there any downsides to buying used absolutely there's downsides to everything of course, um, you have to know where to look for used diapers. And when you're new to the community, of course, you don't know where to look. Um, you have to know what makes a used diaper good and serviceable and what makes them bad and you shouldn't buy it. Just like any other used items, you need to know what to look for, right? Um, we're going to get into all that, so just keep watching. Um, you do have to use bleach. This is a big sticking point for a lot of folks. They come into cloth diapers thinking that they want everything super, super, uber natural and, and so on. It's arguable how natural cloth diapers can be using the products that we have to use for cloth diapers. But, I mean, bleach is one of those. It smells strong. You know, people just, it upsets people. So you will have to use bleach on your used cloth diapers. Know that in advance. You don't need to use bleach unless you get a yeast infection or something like that later on on new diapers so if you're really adverse to bleach used diapers is probably not going to be the thing for you because you cannot use bleach substitutes so just keep that in mind um what's my next point here yes so of course when you're buying used thank you for the heart by the way and the, the reactions thank you um <laughs> so yeah, with anything used, obviously it has less life in it, um, but generally you can, once you take a look at them and make sure that they're cared for properly, generally it doesn't, it doesn't, people used to be much more concerned about the life of diapers, but now people are realizing that, you know, diapers can last a really long time, and even if something happens, like the elastics wear out or whatnot, they can be replaced. So something to think about, but not an end-all be-all, but yes, they will, of course, have less life left in them. All right, so where can I find used cloth diapers to have a look at them and see if I want them? Used to be, there used to be a bunch of cloth diaper swapping sites, cloth diaper traders, diaper swappers. This was more in the era, and I guess you guys probably aren't so interested in the past, but what? I'm old, I gotta talk about it. So back in the day, there used to be the, the limited editions that people were paying thousands of dollars for. So there used to be a lot of websites that would help facilitate that. Those are pretty much gone now. Your main place to find used lip diapers is really going to be Facebook. Um, so you can look on Marketplace, on your mom groups, your local buy nothing group. Getting cloth diapers for free on your local buy nothing group is 
so it, it's everywhere. So make sure that you find your local buy nothing, B-U-I nothing um, group on Facebook. Join it. It's, it's very local. So it goes by actual neighborhoods because you need to drive to someone's house to pick your stuff up. But if you have one, there's probably going to be people there with cloth diapers that they no longer want and they don't want to go through the trouble of selling them. So you can definitely find free cloth diapers on your local buy nothing group. Um, you can just search for um, cloth diaper specific buy sell trade groups, um, BST groups. Um, a few good ones to start with are the $1 cloth diaper auction and the cloth diaper d stash group. Those are like the biggies on Facebook right now. So definitely join those and you can have a look. Um, just a quick note that if you belong to the Cloth Diapers for Beginners Facebook group, we do not allow BST, buy, sell, trade, or gifting on our um, Facebook group. We're just not set up to handle the problems that can occur when money and items are changing hands. So the other groups are set up for that. That's their main purpose. That's, you know, they have their own rules and everything that's specifically made for that so please keep it to the groups that are built for that not the cloth diapers for beginners facebook group um off of facebook you can also go look at craigslist kijiji if you're in canada um they're apparently makari poshmark um ebay those are all sites that you can get cloth diapers on and check your local you know it's it's rare that you'll find something there but always check your local value village and thrift shops you never know people have definitely found some Excellent finds in places like that. All right, so how do you tell, you've, you've found some used diapers, how do you tell if they're good or not? You definitely want to make sure that you're doing your due diligence because cloth diapers can get ruined and they can wear out. So you wanna make sure that you're not spending money on stuff that's no good anymore. So number one, you wanna ask the seller some really good questions and we're gonna talk about them in a minute. You want to check the elastics, you want to check the PUL, and you want to check the snaps and Velcro or uh, hook and loop. So all things that you want to really keep in mind as you're looking at cloth diapers. So what are you going to ask the cloth diaper seller? Well, first of all, you're going to ask them what condition the cloth diapers are in. Because a lot of ads will have, you know, excellent use condition, EUC, excellent good condition, um, new out of package, whatnot. But really those are all, it's all relative. Like what's excellent condition to one person selling the diaper will not necessarily be excellent condition to somebody else that's buying the diaper, right? So ask them a little bit more specific questions. Ask them, you know, how is the PUL looking? How are the Velcro and the snaps? And I'll like get specific and really try and get some good answers from them rather than just relying on a couple of letters. Um, how have you washed them and what detergents have you used? Have you used any softeners? Asking them about their wash routine in that way will point out, first of all, if you know they have researched information and know what to talk about when they when you ask that question. Um, it'll and also if they don't know what they're talking about, they'll probably tell you straight out, oh yeah, I use, you know, ivory snow baby detergent. And of course that has a bunch of softeners in it. So you wanna you want to be aware of that, know that there's going to be problems with them, and so on. Um, if they use, you know, a homemade soap, then you're going to know that they're going to be, you know, stinky, dirty diapers. Um, ask them if they have hard water. If they don't know if they have hard water or soft water, you can probably bet that there's going to be a wash issue with them. So make sure you're asking them that question just so you know what to anticipate. We're moving on. How long have you had the diapers and did you buy them new? You know, diapers can last several, several babies, so you don't know, and you know, not everyone uses all of the diapers that they buy, so you don't know how many babies they've been through. You wanna know that just to see how old they are and how much life is left in them. Um, were these diapers the only ones you owned or were they part of a huge stash? If, you know, one baby is using 15 diapers, that's okay, but if they're using, you know, if the mom is really addicted and has a stash of like 100 diapers, each diaper in a stash of 15 and each diaper in a stash of 100 are going to have much, you know, different wear and tear on them. So you just want to see if they have like just a few diapers that have been using them heavily or a lot of diapers and each one has been used lightly. Um, have they used any diaper creams or ointments? You know, if they tell you, oh yeah, I use Vaseline or something, you know, we're still testing that, <laughs> and that's coming out soon, by the way. I'm filming some of that um, this afternoon. So hold your horses on the cloth diaper cream experiment. 
if you if you're following along and you are waiting for that <laughs> if you don't know what I'm talking about it'll be really soon but anyway, ask them what they're using. If they, you know, Vaseline or zinc creams come up, then you know you have to kind of test for absorbency and see what's going on that way. Um, and if I'm saying, I, know, I realize I'm talking about a few things that are over your head here. Um, don't worry about that so much. You're going to get there. Ask these questions so you know what's going on and kind of record the answers. And if something pops out at you, you can then research it. So if you don't know what I'm talking about for diaper creams and what to avoid, what to not avoid, if you don't know what I'm talking about hard water and whatnot, just, just keep this all in the back of your mind. And if you're shopping for diapers before you learn all this stuff, just, you know, ask these questions anyway and just have the information because you're going to need it later. So that's my advice for that. Um, okay, so you found some. You're like, ooh, these are interesting. They're super cute. They're super cheap. I'm going to look into it more, right? First thing you want to look at is check the elastics. Now, if you, you know, COVID is winding down, <laughs> hopefully, knock on wood, it's winding down. So if you can see these diapers in person before you give money, then that's a really good thing. Um, if you can't, you can't. If you don't live near the person, it is what it is. But if you're looking online, look at the elastics. See if there's a lot of wrinkle in the photo or just a little bit of wrinkle and compare it to a picture of a new diaper of that same brand and just see how the elastics look. If you're able to actually touch them and feel them, you're going to you're gonna want to feel the, the elastics like for real. So you're going to take that diaper and have a feel and what you're, you're feeling for crunch. So if you stretch it out and you hear a snap, 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 or you hear, you feel like a crunching red flag the elastics are are deteriorating so don't go for them um, you're gonna feel for rolls you're gonna feel along and if there's any like folding over of the elastics the elastics should be flat inside there if they're not flat that's another sign that the elastics are coming end of life um, and stretch a good uh, cloth diaper will stretch out a good couple of inches if it, do, it doesn't hardly stretch at all, then you know there's there's something going on. So you're looking for crunch, roll, and stretch. Just make sure that that elastic's fresh, it's springy, it's good. Um, and you're going to check the PUL. You're going to check for two things. The first thing you're going to check for in your PUL is cracking. So you want to... This is a, this is a pocket diaper, so this is a good example. So you're going to open up the diaper. This is a pocket diaper. It has a lining on the inside. But just find the PUL and you're going to stretch it out, like literally like stretch it out and just have a look. Are there any like cracks or lines or breaks? You know, have a good look. You can see, I hope you can see the photo in this slide down here, um, what cracking will look like. It's just, it's very faint, but in the plasticky side of the PUL, it's going to be like a little tear almost. So that's a bad sign. If you see any cracking in the PUL, throw that diaper down, you don't touch it, it's it's garbage. So don't, you can fix a broken elastic or an old elastic, you cannot fix the PUL. So definitely take a good look at the PUL. Um, other than cracking, you also wanna look for any bubbling or lifting of the plastic side from the fabric side of the cover. That's called delamination. And again, it means the, the diaper shot, don't buy it, walk away. So cracking and delaminating on the PUL. And then I don't have a slide here, but for your snaps and uh, Velcro, it's going to be pretty obvious if, you know, the Velcro is coming apart at the edges or, you know, full of dirt and something. Um, your snaps, just make sure they're not cracked or flat so that they won't snap. Just, you'll be able to tell by looking, but make sure to look for it. All right, so you've checked the diaper, you've seen the diapers are good price. The seller has some decent answers. You've checked the diapers by hand even, and they look great. You brought them home. Now what are you gonna do with them? Well, you have to prep, prep the You have to get a new mouth. Sorry. And then you have to prep them. So first step, all cloth diapers must be bleached. Again, I know a lot of people have a problem with that. If you have a problem with that, probably used diapers aren't going to be for you because it's really necessary to make sure you're not giving your baby any passable 
things. So yeast spores or viruses like hood, hood, hand, I always say hoof, <laughs> excuse me, um, hand, foot, and mouth disease can and li live in stool for a very long time. So any particles of these types of things needs to be killed. So and the only thing that can sanitize that on fabric is bleach. You cannot use um, oxygen bleach and I'm going to link to the, the sanitized article, the whole article that I have on the website about this where I actually show you the emails from Clorox that say you cannot use oxygen bleach to sanitize. So you cannot use oxygen bleach, you cannot use, what else, <laughs> else do people try to use, beginner, which I can't pronounce right, I'm so, I apologize. You, you can't use these things to sanitize fabric. Right now, the only thing we have that sanitizes fabric successfully is bleach. You must use bleach. So you're going to bleach your diapers to make sure all of these things are killed. They're safe for your, you know, newborn baby's private parts. You want to be very careful. Yeah, it just gets them ready. And once you do that, you don't have to worry about them. They are clean. All the bacteria will be killed. All the germs will be killed. All the yeast spores, all the viruses killed. So you can be confident after you've bleached them. Um, I list out in here and also in that article the kind of process. Um, you want to look for a bleach that's at least 5.25% sodium hypochlorite. <laughs> Sorry with the pronunciations. Um, that's what you want to look for. If you can only find something that's weaker, just bump it up. So if you're, you know, using a bathtub and you have two point whatever bleach, um, use a cup instead of half a cup and I'll get to measurements later, but just bump it up so that it, it has enough of the active ingredient. Um, you want to look for the bottle that says kills 99.9% .9 of germs or disinfecting, disinflecting. I'm having a hard time today. Disinfecting bleach. You want to look for the one that's made to kill, you know, germs and bacteria if you can. Um, and then you're going to soak it for at least 30 minutes to an hour. It will not hurt your PUL. You know, that's a big, you know, when I first bleached my diapers, I was like, oh my God, I'm going to ruin them. No, it won't hurt the PUL. Don't, uh, it will get in your wool. It, it will bleach your wool, but everything else will be fine. Don't worry about it taking the colors off the PUL or anything. Polyester doesn't, the laminated polyester won't be affected. Um, so you're going to either soak them in a bathtub or you're going to put everything into your washing machine, fill it up with water, put the bleach in, let it squish around, and then pause your machine for that amount of time. So you really want it to soak. And ever so often, if you can kind of give it a swish or give it, let it, go a couple of times in your washer, that will help as well just to make sure the bleach gets in all the nooks and crannies. You know. Um, so measurements, for if you're doing this in a bathtub, which is, you know, a normal way to do it, you just fill up your bathtub, um, put all your diapers in, you're going to use about a half a cup. Um, you're not going to fill your bathtub up all the way, it's probably just enough to cover the amount of diapers that you have and put a half a cup in there. It's probably about like you know, a third of the way up at your bathroom. Um, other containers, including your washing machine, you're going to use about one tablespoon for every gallon of water. Um, I know a lot, this confuses a lot of people who don't know how much water goes in their washing machine, right? Um, if you're part of the cloth diapers for beginners crowd, you'll know that we advocate for a measure mesh measure measure method wash routine and that's our style of wash routines where we actually measure how big your washing machine is how many cloth diapers you're washing at a time what your detergent calls for and your water so everything is leveled properly if you do that you're going to know the cubic foot measurement of your washing machine which isn't that difficult to find I know all of this sounds crazy but it's actually not that bad once you just go step by step and I'll have resources later on in the presentation um, but anyhow, you're going to know the cubic foot measurement of your washing machine. A rough, every washing machine, this is the problem we have. All the washing machines are not standardized like a dishwasher or that type of thing. They're all over the place and the, no wonder laundry is hard, right? They, they're just all over the place. But in general, you can kind of guesstimate that a five cub, cubic foot washing machine, which is like a very, very big washing machine, by the way, like that's large. 
that is going to use about 20.5 gallons of water. Nope. What do they always call when you're doing stuff? Hello? I'm doing a presentation right now. Bye. Sorry. Guys. Um, so, yeah, a five cubic foot um, washing machine is going to be about 20 and a half gallons. So that works out to about a cup and a quarter of bleach if it's all the way full. And you're going to know how many diapers you need if you do a measure method wash routine. How many, how much weight of diapers you're going to need to put in there to get it to full. So yeah, that's for full. So adjust accordingly there and you can kind of crunch your own maps if you want or kind of guesstimate around there. You probably want to be using at least a half a cup and then adjust from there for the size of your washing machine. Um, and then soak it for uh, 30 minutes to an hour and rinse it, you're good. Um, you do want to do a detergent wash at least in hot water to break down that bleach and get it out of there, of course. Um, but then you also may want to be stripping your diapers as well. I'm just going to check if we have any comments or anything. Nothing yet. Okay. Um, if you have any questions as I'm going, pop in and ask them. Um, so your cloth diapers may also need to be stripped. I'm saying may. That's an important thing. You don't absolutely need to strip your used diapers. If you're very, very confident that they are clean and ready to go, you only have to sanitize them and you do have to sanitize them. But stripping diapers, that's why we're asking our, you know, the seller that we bought from all these questions and getting all these, this information. Because if they're vague or giving the wrong answers to the questions, you'll know, okay, I'm going to strip because there might be softeners, bad detergents, bad every anything on the diapers I'm going to strip reset them to zero go from there um but you know if you're buying the diapers from someone you know is part of say this community and they've done a measure method wash routine and the diapers are good they smell clean they're they're fantastic we probably don't need to sand uh strip sorry you do need to sanitize you probably don't need to strip them if you're confident that they're clean and they're good and the wash routine was on point don't worry about it just skip that part Stripping is to remove the bacteria and the germs and the viruses. Sorry, sanitizing, <laughs> just want to make sure I'm saying this right. Sanitizing is to remove the bacteria, germs, and viruses. Stripping is only to remove the products and the softeners and the hard water mineral deposits from the diapers. So you're stripping the stuff off of the fabric for stripping or you're killing all of the nasties with sanitizing. Two separate complete processes, so you don't necessarily need them both, but you do need to sanitize them. Hope that's clear. Sorry if I'm beating a dead horse also. <laughs> all right, so how do you strip your diapers? Well, you do not use Dawn dish soap. You do not use Viginer. You do not use Borax or Calgon or any other homemade, crazy, witchy, unicorn farts recipe that you're going to find out there because that actually won't take the, the stuff off of the diaper. Dawn dish soap is great for grease and greasy dishes, but it doesn't remove hard water deposits. And, you know, like, you, you have to think about what the product is actually doing and all of these homemade water softener, Dawn dish soap, Viginer things just don't do it. So think about, be critical of what you're you're trying to do and go from there. So all of, and I have the whole list here, all of these <laughs> things don't strip your diapers. Um, what does strip your diapers is sodium carbonate products. So yeah, sodium carbonate products. So these products are made specifically for stripping diapers. The two I recommend are RLR, which is a laundry stripping pro product, and Grovia Mighty Bubbles, which is specifically formulated for cloth diapers. Grovia Mighty Bubbles does have a little bit of detergent in it. So if you're worried about detergent buildup in the cloth diapers, I would go with RLR. It's the one that I like the best. Um, you can also do it in a, a bathtub or container. You don't necessarily have to do it in your washing machine, which is a little bit less effective. So in general, I do like RLR better, but it is a little bit harder to get a hold of. Um, 
neither of these are sold in big box stores. You're going to want to go to cloth diaper stores or online. Um, so those are the two products I recommend. And some of you who know a lot of stuff might be thinking, well, washing soda is made out of sodium carbonate. So why can't I just use that? You could in theory but you're probably going to use too much of it and it doesn't have the other kind of encapsulating ingredients that kind of help take it away. So I really don't recommend using straight washing soda. It's just too hard to get that balance right. I really recommend using a product that, you know, we have measurements for, you know, how much to use, how to use it, and so on. So sodium carbonate, use a stripping product is just the best way and the safest way it's not going to mess up your diapers. So I have a link that I will also put in the description um, to give you instructions about that. I'm not going to go through the whole process because yeah I'm not going to go through the whole process there but the instructions are there if you think that you need to strip your diapers. Um, if Aside from use when you would also want to strip your diapers is if um, you've been using any soft, uh, fabric softeners or anything like that for a while and it's kind of causing repelling issues, that's gonna help with that. If you have super hard water and you haven't been adjusting your routine and you have smelly diapers, doing a strip might also benefit you there. Anyhow, um, but you're probably really going to want to use it for used diapers when the wash routine from the past person wasn't on point. Whew, all right. I think that was the last slide. That was the last slide. So I just wanted to talk about resources. So aside from all of these links are going to be in the description after the video is done. I didn't get a chance to throw them in earlier. This week was a short week in Canada. We had our Thanksgiving. So I was kind of making this up to 10 minutes before. Um, so I'll put all these links and resources in the description afterwards. But um, how to strip and sanitize um, your diapers, the full instructions are going to be there, the um, full used cloth diaper guide, so you know all of the questions that you want to be asking and some more visual, some videos and stuff to show you what to look for in your PUL and stuff, that article is there. And also how to do the measure, me me measure method wash routine, that information is going to be there as well. If you want all of this stuff all together in one place, all laid out in a more step-by-step -step fashion than a bunch of blog posts and that. I do have the cloth diaper wash and care handbook that you can see there. Um, it's not very expensive. It's nine dollars and I have a two dollar off coupon for you there um, with the the coupon code YouTube. We'll get you two bucks off that so it's very cheap. If you're a reader <laughs> um, that that's going to be the place to go to get everything all in one shot. It's going to teach you how to do your measure method. It's going to teach you how to prep your new diapers, your used diapers. It's going to talk about troubleshooting smells, leaks, all of all of the stuff. It has all of the wash and care stuff in that. So that's an option for you as well and I'll put the link again in the description. But that's it. I hope that was helpful. If you have any questions, I would love to hear them right now. Shoot. Oh, <laughs> hi Jennifer, such good info. I'm so glad to read your article when I bought my used diapers. I'm so confident in using them. I know this video is gonna help be helpful to so many people, thank you. Oh, you are so sweet. Thank you so much for that. That's, you're so sweet, thank you. Um, how do you know what is a good price for used diapers? Super good question. Um, about 50 to 75% of retail but that's kind of is a very general number it's going to depend on the brand so like if you're buying a used Elva diaper you're going to want to pay a lot less than that because Elvas have a shorter lifespan than say a Thirsties or a, a Grovia lasts forever um, so go by brand um, there's a couple premium brands too that you do want to be a little bit careful with who am I thinking right now bum genius Bum Genius diapers, the elastic goes like that. So just, you know, do a bit of research on the brands to find out what what the lifespan of them is. And you can do that by just, you know, asking in a, the Cloth Diapers for Beginners Facebook group. Ask, hey, like, hey, how, how do these hold up over time, right? 
and you'll get your answers that way. So it, it varies by brand. Um, it's going to vary by location. You know, if you're living in Alaska and cloth diapers are hard to find, you're probably going to pay more for used than you will if you live in California where everybody's a little bit more crunchy granola, right? Sorry if I'm generalizing. <laughs> you can talk about my Canadian maple syrup, whatever. <laughs> um, but yeah, so <laughs> it's gonna it's gonna vary a little bit by location, what brand you're buying, and of course what condition they're in. But you know, starting base price for a premium brand that's looking really good, I would say you know seventy five percent of the cost, and going down from there should be very inexpensive to get some used good used diapers. Um, that makes sense. Thanks. You are most welcome. Thank you for asking a question. Let me turn this just on. Well, let me put, no. Nah. You don't want to see my ugly mug, do you? I'll put me off in the corner seat and I'll put the resources back up so you can see those. Yeah. Um, if we have any more questions, I will take them. It doesn't have to be about used diapers. You can ask me anything. I am not picky. Let me put that back up. Sorry play with my screen here um but I think there's not that many of you watching I think it might just be Jennifer <laughs> Jennifer do you have any more questions <laughs> I'm speaking directly to you <laughs> how creepy is that <laughs> sorry um but if no more questions then I will just end it here and keep it nice and short and sweet what time is it 36 that will be a very short live video yep I hope people aren't upset. I always get, oh, I missed the, the live. I didn't get to ask my question. So I hope people aren't upset. But I'm here. <laughs> I'm waiting for them. <laughs> um, but it looks like maybe we're at the end. All right. Well, since that's the end. Jennifer says, <laughs> laugh out loud. I don't think so. I'm all over your crew. That's awesome. Thank you for reading and for being in the group and asking questions and being an awesome part of the community. The, seriously, community members like you just make it, make it so, I mean, my daughter, no, I'm getting a little, <laughs> but my daughter is six years old now, so I haven't um, actually done cloth diapers for a while. The only reason I can still keep talking about them and keep learning about them and keep, you know, having people test them for me and get involved is because of awesome community members like you. So thank you very much. And yeah, thank you. I'm glad it's helpful in some way. <laughs> All right, but I will let you go. Um, and other people can catch the replay and ask questions in the comments if you have them. I do try to answer them all. It's a little bit confusing the way the YouTube works, but I'm still getting used to it too. So there's that. But ask questions in the comments and I will try to get to them. Or, of course, ask questions in the group and that's the best way to get you some answers. Otherwise, I will be in the Facebook group on Friday doing a Q&A. Um, and then the following week, I would... Do I have a calendar here? So, October... The 15th, so I'm doing YouTube, and then Facebook on the 22nd, and then YouTube again on the 29th, right before Halloween. Probably won't be dressed up, sorry. <laughs> um, but I'll do another one on YouTube, and if somebody has a topic that they would like to see me cover, then drop it in the comments as well, and I will try to do that one. But that's it for now. So excited for the cream experiment to come out. I heard it's coming soon. It is, it is. I know it's been forever. The whole COVID thing kind of squashed all of my progress on the videos but I'm trying to pick it back up now obviously <laughs> um and trying to make it a little bit easier on myself by doing the live videos so it's everything rolls a bit faster and I'm not prepping each video so much when the, the cloth diaper cream experiment takes so much work anyhow you don't need to know all that it is coming I promise it'll be soon all right <laughs> I will see everyone later and have a good weekend bye for now thank you Jennifer